The theme for July's monthly animation challenge was Ninja Dodge. We had some really cool animations that were submitted um, and I'm gonna critique one of them in depth and I think you're gonna learn a lot from it if you're an animator. So let's go ahead and check them out. All right, let's take a quick look again at Adam's Ninja Dodge. I'm gonna critique this one. Cool. Um, th there's some fun stuff here. I like the overall dynamic movement, the, the choices, like the fact that he's kind of going into this tumble here and the way the camera has made this dynamic. I also like the set that you've built. It feels like he's a wild alien creature with the environment that we have. And I like that you've introduced the arrows on the way you've animated them. Um, I think it makes it clear why he's dodging all this stuff um, in the first place. A um, little confused why you picked a goblin character, but I think it's kind of funny. And it, like I said, his movements do feel cool. They feel like something a ninja would do, so no big deal. Um, I have a lot of thoughts on this. Um, I want to talk about posing a bit. I want to talk about settles, um, lead and follow, and the overall uh, the overall feeling, like the entertainment choices and the overall feeling of the movement uh, and the camera work. So, got a lot of things to cover. Um, with with all these, it might feel like there's so many things you got to work on. Um, but I would just kind of take them one at a time and just continue to improve these things one at a time and just really uh, enjoy your progress here because you've done some good work here following through uh, with this month's challenge. So I hope you I hope you keep this up because you're going to continue to get, get it better and better from this. Um, all right, first up with posing. So from this entrance, first thing I notice is that this is all very twin especially with this tail right in the center there. Um, you know, we've got these arms doing the same thing and the face is even doing the same thing. Not that the face is like the focus. Um, but I would try to break up all of these vertical and straight lines uh, in the pose. So what you could do is if this leg is gonna plant, tilt that hip up to show that this uh, hip here, there's no weight on this side, it's really stretching down and helps you raise the hip even higher, by the way, so that you can stretch further, um, which helps your weight. Then you can tilt the chest as well, um, which immediately gives you some squash and stretch into the body, makes it more interesting. And that changes these arms so that one is a little bit higher than the other. And with the head, you can you can do whatever you need to do. I mean, really, you could have it focus on camera. You could have it drag from this side. Um, I would just do something to angle it so that it's not straight. So um, you know, you can you can have it just kind of do what the hips do, so that it's very counter, counter, counter. You know, something along these lines. Um, and then you can not only just change. Like we're talking like rotate Z here right now, but you can not only change that, but you can twist stuff. So you could have the chest kind of dragging that way if you wanted. Like it's it's twisted away from us to the left. And then the hips could be, uh, <laughs> let me reverse that actually with the pose that you have, it makes more sense. Um, so here you would twist towards us because you got that leg forward. So you would see more of that side of that hip. And then here you might twist uh, the opposite direction, right? 
So like that way. Um, so that starts to break up your pose a lot and makes it more dynamic. And I would do that for all, all kinds of spots through here. So even in like this pose, I would break that up a bit. You know, I would, I would totally put it into the hip to be opposite, whatever you do here and give this some angle. And that gives you that squash and stretch through here. And think about the head as well. You do have this head tilted, but I can feel that the body is like perfectly straight. And the same, look at the feet. The feet are like on the same plane. Um, you can break those up. You can bring one further back. You can bring it forward. You can tilt, bring it out to the side. You can, you can rotate one more or less. So you can do a lot to, to make that more dynamic. Um, so here again, you got the same thing, right? It's, it's all flat through there. So you can fav favor a side. We do this naturally in real life anyway. Where we favor a side. Because we can't do everything perfectly 50-50 with all of our limbs, you know? We can't say, okay, 50% of the weight's gonna go on this leg and 50% is gonna go on that leg. Um, as, even, as, even if we try to control it so much. So this, this pose is better. Just think about that stuff in general with posing. It's a good rule of thumb on how you can make things better. And it will it will directly influence your animation. So from there, I really want to talk about I really want to talk about settles. So as your character comes in for the landing here. He comes in and he hits a harsh stop. So he, his hips, I'm just looking at the hips, they come down and they freeze. Like they look like they might bounce up a little bit. One, two, three, click. And then it's this wall right here. So think about that bouncing ball. You have that big first bounce, right? And then what comes after that? Another one. Right. And it doesn't have to be exactly like a bouncing ball where it's like, you know, a little bit less than the first one. We can control our bodies a little bit to kind of stop. Right. So all we need is that general feeling of that momentum. Maybe there's even a little, a little extra bounce after the, the second one. Um, we need that feeling of the momentum is dying off. The momentum is kind of being carried through the motion and kind of needs to um, dissipate. So right now with him, him coming in and landing and then it's like, click. There's no real ease to that. If this is where it's coming up, you can ease in and then drop down. And you wanna approach this just like a bouncing ball too with the hang time so that every time he's going up, like if you're gonna ease into the up, you want that spacing to be close together and you wanna come down fast, right? come down fast and then if you're gonna hold down here, that's where you're, you know, you're really easing and, and going slow. <clears throat> I feel that click there and um, that's really affecting the spine, the overlap that you're creating in the whole rest of the body. And you, this is again, something you can apply throughout the, the rest of your animation. So here, you do have it continuing to come down, which is fine and then it springs up. But here again, I really feel that click. Um, A, because it, it comes down and then it just kind of stays there. But also there's this wall going screen right. So it's like click, right? And it's starting in the hips, but it's also in the spine overlap. So we really feel that wall smack there and it feels harsh. Um, so that's a quick note on settles. Let's now talk about, let's now talk about your, your timing and spacing of this. So for me through here, it feels like the hip is fairly even. Like I don't really feel the hang time on there to say, okay, we're holding towards that top of that arc. 
and then it's going to get faster as it comes down. I don't really feel that speed there. Um, and that's, that's starting with the hip. Through here, his momentum coming screen left also feels like it's, it slows down to a crawl. It doesn't feel consistent going across. And what's made this really difficult here is the camera move. It's got a quick pullback, so it feels a very rushed all of a sudden because of that camera move. Uh, but I think it's also in the hip spacing that you have. So I would give that a look and really focus on that as you continue to tweak your animations. And I'm just gonna quickly go over the spacing here, what we see in camera. All that really matters is what we see in camera, right? Because if it doesn't look good here, it doesn't look good anywhere. Okay, so I know I roughed that out. Um, it's not exact or anything. Uh, it looks like your spacing gets a little wonky here in terms of how high it is and how far it's going across, uh, at least in camera space. There's also a massive jump through here compared to all the frames where it was just hanging very close together. So it feels like a really sudden speed up. Um, I would really try to probably get this spaced out a little bit better so this is a little closer, a little bit easier. Um, and you could probably even remove one of these frames in here to kind of get into your squash faster and make that a little bit punchier. The other thing is your takeoff is pretty slow. So you can make this a lot more explosive and it just starts by like really moving this up. Instead of down there, you can move those hips way up, or you can just like move it where you are here um, and figure out how to really stretch and drag these arms extra in the spine as well to keep that going behind. If the rig doesn't really have the controls to really make that work smoothly because you want this spacing to not jump too much, um, you know, then you can sacrifice that, that punchiness of that up and down. But it feels really slow on takeoff compared to, you know, this big jump here. You want to try to make them feel kind of even because the energy that he's putting into the jump is the same kind of energy that's flowing through the jump until the end. So it's not like he suddenly got a rocket booster right here and took off and he's Iron Man. <laughs> Um, so that's, a, that's a, again, a basic note, but it, it, it does a lot to tweak your animation to make it feel better. So I'm just gonna quickly delete those. Okay. So I would take a good look at that throughout those areas and coming back to lead and follow right now. So when your character is still here, First off, everything is frozen. We don't have that settle. We need some kind of arc for that hip to go in. When you're coming in for the jump, you could have come like screen left or screen right. Screen left probably works better. You can come down, land, move a little bit screen left, and then use this down and left movement to spring you screen right. Okay, so basically as you're settling through here, that hip is moving somewhere down into the left and coming up, creating a nice little loop. And these little loops make your movement pretty organic. Uh, it does a lot to, to make it feel more natural, more fluid, um, and gives him some life here so he's not frozen. And it tells you what rotations to give those hips, because if the hip is coming down through here, the hip is, you know, going to be tilting and twisting differently. 
Um, right now, what we feel with this path of action is that the hip is frozen and then it goes linear up into the left and then linear down and then straight linear up. So it feels very ping pong ball as opposed to flowing arcs and figure eights. So apply that everywhere. Think about that path of action. It'll make a huge difference in this animation and for all the ones to come. What else? The lead and follow. So here the hip goes up and then it comes down. So it feels like you're leading with the hip uh, through here. The way that the body moves in the head, it kind of feels like you're, you're gonna lean into it with the body and then you're gonna shoot up with the head. Um, so just be very conscious of that. I would try to keep the head kind of dragging from here as long as it can. So if the hip goes here, It, you know, the spine would drag back this way if the hip is going there. It would try to hold this position. And then as it comes up, you know, you're dragging back from here and curling over at the same time, okay? And you're trying to keep that head spacing uh, not too broad. So here it's not too bad. This is a massive jump. So the head, the spine is basically just picked up too quickly. It head a lot more down to make that work. Okay. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, the body, by the way, feels very like almost frozen through here. And a lot of that's because you've you resolved the overlap too quickly. Um, you know, you're going from this to as you're reaching the top, you can go almost for a reversal. Um, you can still keep the pose that you have. You just want it to feel like he's gone from more curled in position to something more curled back. Um, so just keep that in mind. That's what the overlap should be doing. It should still kind of be coming up at this point, um, reaching its less curled in pose um, and dragging. Now let's, let's talk about the limbs too. So right now we can break up the feet. It's great that you've got the squash and stretch in there. I would have one foot stay even longer on the ground, like at least a frame. You could get like a frame, a stretch, maybe. Maybe this one's higher again, or you flip it and do it the other way. And you have this is up. And this one's down. Um, either way. But we can break them up so that one foot is coming off the ground sooner than the other. And then the hands, they're slidey here. And they both are, you know, picking up at the same time, just like the legs. So I would do the same thing here, but I would also allow some more stretch. So his weight's really more on this side with his upper body. So I would keep this one on the ground longer. Let that really stretch out before you pick it up. Maybe not that much, but you can, you know, you get the idea and then you start to break them up. So this might be already starting to feel like a squash as the other ones getting a couple of frames of stretch in there. They're also dead even through here and here, and I don't really feel separation and overlap on the feet. Feels like they come up and then they just kind of stop and drift with the body as opposed to overlapping with it where they're dragging behind. Like here, it would curl in and maybe curl down. Like there's going to be some, there's going to be some translating the, uh, like away from us during all this.
And this, um, this is another great, so keep applying what I'm saying to the whole, all your different moves. So here, as you're coming in for the landing, you could have gotten here sooner. You could have had one hand get here earlier with a stretch, right? And you're, you're like this, for instance. And then as you're coming in to your squash, you know, you can really squash in on that and change the, the shape and the angle so you get more compression in that body right that leads me to my next point uh, we talked about this pose again breaking this up right part of the problem with this movement right now is that you're moving very linear this way right and then in a couple frames just these two frames you do all the twisting you need to go that way and you freeze so what, it's very hard for us to change direction in a couple of frames uh, that goes going directly against the momentum we've created going this, this current direction, right? So for this, I would almost put it into the move, the jump itself. So if he's gonna jump this way, it's not quite linear. I would, I would have it be, the jump would be, you know, more of an arc that comes across this way a little bit a little bit and then uh, rotationally through here i would already be twisting around through this squash so as this is this should be tightening in more and more by the way you're curling in more and more and more for that more that that spring the tightening of the spring that you're going to release and you're twisting over through here so that when you spring out of it you know, it's not just happening over these couple of frames. This is great, by the way, this squash. Just really push this moment, continue to tighten in so that you're playing more off that shape change where you're really curled to really stretched out here. I like that, yeah and continue those rotations. So through here, if you're gonna twist this way, keep going. You're in the middle of it, you're in the middle of the air. It's really hard to stop that momentum, right? So I would expect that belt line to keep kind of twisting up. And then maybe as you're coming in for the landing, you're actually, you know, your leg is gonna be like up here. This is really tilted down coming in at an angle a little bit. You know, it really, it really changes things. Um, and then, I'm not really feeling much drag on that head, especially through this big jump. Between these frames, these two frames, the really big jump and the hand has a big jump also right there. So it doesn't move a lot and then it moves. So keeping that hand on the ground might be in your best interest or keeping this one on the ground and just making sure that this is dragging properly. So like through these frames. You know, you're easing out something like that. Again, when you adjust the spacing for this so that it feels like you're creating, you have more consistent momentum, it will do a lot to change this. You also rotate back here. When, if you're gonna twist this way, I would continue that twist through here where you're twisted away. And then as you're coming in for this landing, you can twist back to come into this pose, right? And you could overshoot it. So you go kind of, this is your overshoot and then you settle back here. Right. 
if you apply those those hip marks that we talked about where you come in for the landing your path maybe path of action is maybe like you come in for the landing you come screen right and then back and down you can do that or you come up and then just drop there um, something along those lines that will really help help with this And then here again, you got that linear move straight up. I would already, I would have this angled. You know, it's coming towards the camera. So you're angling that body towards the camera. It doesn't feel like his eyes. You could blink him here, or his eyes are closed for a bit, and then they open, and you can have them looking right at camera all through here. And I would keep adjusting those eyes every frame to make sure they're looking at the same spot in camera. Where he's looking at here, it looks like he's looking at the ground for no reason. And then here, he's suddenly looking at us. And then here, as he's continuing to go up, you would expect those eyes to drop a little bit as far as where they're looking, because it feels like he's looking higher up now. This is pretty good. You know, you can, tone, you can bring them down a little bit as he's dropping to kind of keep it straight on. And then here, you know, you'd have to bring them up again. And here I would keep the head turned back. So he's continuing to look at us, or at the very least, try to keep the eyes focused on the same spot. So we can see where he's hitting, so he feels locked from where he's hitting. Okay. And all through this, again, we don't want that rotation to be dead. So you want that chest to be rotating back. And as it's doing that rotate, you know, you don't want that spacing to be even. You want to go fast through the middle, get get to this extreme and hold back here because he's winding up for that punch. It's a squash, right? And that may be the chest, and then this can happen on frame, you know, 81 is when it starts, and then the arm will do the same thing, but it'll be a bit delayed. You want that arm to still be going when the chest is here. You want that arm to be, you know, going whipping back fast and trying to get to that spot because the chest pulls it and that makes it feel a lot more powerful through here and you can let the chest start to go even earlier uh, than the than the arm you have the chest going here which is great i would just maybe twist it a frame earlier to start that movement because it feels like in one frame it just jumps and then it, and if it freezes here, it might freeze there. Um, and I don't really feel like that arm is coming forward either spatially. I don't really feel that going back, 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 back and holding in camera space. And then I don't really feel it start to come forward and get into this. It just feels like it's all of a sudden there's this one frame jump. So we're missing that ease in and ease out there uh, with the camera space. High level note, um, just the overall movement of everything. He feels like he spends a lot of time in the beginning and at the, the this this jump here, both of these moments, he feels like he spends a lot of time there. If he's getting shot at by arrows, I might have him land quick, jump, and try to make that a little bit more exciting where it's like, hua, hua, you know, like he doesn't take a long time to think about where he's going. Um, and same deal here, I might even take less time because I presume that someone's gonna keep shooting arrows at him. So maybe we don't need a lot of time for him to really read where he's gotta go. He's just trying to get from point A to point B and get to punch this guy, whoever he is. Um, so think about the rhythm as a high level note to your actions. Uh, to, that would make it 
feel a lot more interesting uh, as well. So giving some moments a little bit more time uh, than others. Um, these, these both feel like they have about the same amount of time that, they, that you spend here. So I would really think about breaking that up. So, you know, like listening to a song is like, boom, 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 boom. It sounds a lot more interesting than bum, 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 which is what you've kind of created here by having the timing for these two moments be the same. Hope that makes sense. Let me know what you think of all of this. I hope it's really helpful and insightful of how far you can go. Um, there's a lot um, here in body mechanics, obviously, um, that can make you a better animator uh, and make you a hireable animator. Don't be overwhelmed by it. Buy it. Take it a piece at a time. I would avoid the camera moves um, for now and just focus on, you know, something like a landing in a settle. Try to keep it simple. Uh, and figure out all those pieces um, before you try to tackle something that has, you know, all this going on, because uh, this is quite complex. So it's been a big jump for you, a good challenge for you. I think you've learned a lot from it. I hope you had fun. Um, oh, my final note, I almost forgot, the camera. The camera could also use more ease in and ease out. I think it's just a bit harsh. So if I turn off the drawings there, here as the camera comes back. See how it doesn't have any settle either. It kind of quickly gets there too fast for me. And it's a bit jarring where, you know, if we're looking at the moon, you see the moon comes up here and then it's like down again and then you've stopped. There's no ease in to this camera movement. It feels very harsh, almost like it's in stepped. Um, and I would let the camera lead more. So even in these moments where he's gonna go and squash, you can anticipate the camera move where he's, you know, if he's gonna squash down to jump, like we talked about that path of action, you know, uh, you can have the camera go down just a little bit to anticipate that it's gonna move. And then you can have him lead it more so that the camera doesn't get so ahead of him like in here. Um, and in this scenario, you can have it kind of come to the right a little bit. And then through here, you're doing a good job leading it. I would just make sure, see you got a massive pullback there in Translate. Just make sure that as your camera starts to move left, you're also pulling back a little bit so you can ease into this move a little bit more, okay? You might also introduce a, cam a little bit of camera movement through here, just to give us the idea that the camera is alive um, and we're not surprised. We don't pay attention to it when it suddenly starts moving, right? <clears throat> but I think this, this is the camera movement that's giving you the most headache for the animation because you're rotating, translating, and, and uh, doing a lot that changes the visual space of your character. So those are my final notes on that. Like I said, hope it was helpful for you. Let me know. And um, I hope to see your next animation challenge. I hope you had a blast, you know, watching these animations and hopefully you learned uh, a lot from the critique. If you would like to join the next animation challenge, check out the link in the description below. It's free. Uh, I believe right now we're, we're wrapping up Spider-Verse, uh, the Spider-Verse theme for this month. And uh, we'll have critiques up for that shortly. So there's always something fun going on. And if you, you know, you've been participating in these monthly challenges, keep it up. Uh, I, I look forward to critiquing your work if I haven't done so already. Um, and I, I love seeing your progress week to week. So let's keep going. Until that next challenge, happy animating. Take care.